My last IEM review was the EW200, which is almost a no-brainer buy at $40. It's not perfect, but it's perfect at its price point. Today we step further up the Simgot ladder to the EM6L, coming in just under $110. So let's cover the basics and find out what I liked and disliked and see how something like this stacks up against a very competent budget option from the same brand. Simgot has really been coming through over the last year or so with models like the EW200, EA500, and of course this EM6L. They typically build around their house sound with the slight variations that revolve around the Harman tuning curves. The M6L is actually more of a step outside of the general curve, so it makes it an interesting IEM to contrast with some of their other offerings. The packaging is very simple with these. We get the EM6Ls themselves, a detachable 3.5mm cable with two pin connectors, only three sets of tips, which I felt was a little bit short here, a lot of people customize and tip swap. All in all, there, there could have been a couple more options here for fitment. A hard carrying case, which is great, and I do much prefer this over the little pouch that comes with the EW200, for example. I guess the first comparison for the day. The M6L has a better case than the EW200. We get the same printed logo on the front, but this time coming in all black, which I actually think looks really good. Definitely gonna catch your fingerprints with this one, but not as much as the all chrome EW200. The M6L is kind of like a black car. A perfectly clean black car is hard to top, but then you basically drive it once and you're back to dirty. We're gonna take a quick break from today's video to talk about the sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. Do you ever find yourself feeling uninspired at work or possibly you're in a position that doesn't really have a great future? Have you ever thought about a career in cybersecurity? It's a position with rapidly growing demand. In fact, there really isn't a better time to start a career in cybersecurity as it's expected to grow by 35% by 2031. I myself work in IT and security has become a key focus in every aspect. Data intrusions are more rampant than ever. As you can see in the headlines here, data breaches are happening everywhere all the time. The cybersecurity program at SNHU would be an exciting start to a potentially very rewarding career. These types of positions potentially have great starting wages, are in high demand, have lots of growth potential, and allow for continuous education in this ever-changing field. If you're interested in starting a career in cybersecurity, then I'm excited to tell you more about today's sponsor, SNHU, and what the program offers. You'll learn about network security, application security, incident response, and investigation. You'll also get hands-on experience in cyber labs and the opportunity to participate in competitions. This program has actually been designated as a National Center for Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense by the NSA. The program is taught by faculty with real-world experience, so you'll have opportunities to connect with people actually in the industry. And when you wrap this up, SNHU will be there to help you begin the job hunt. But like I said, with an outlook like cybersecurity, the job opportunities are looking great. SNHU is accredited, nonprofit, and radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. Go to https colon slash slash snhu.edu slash koikendall, also linked in my description below, to see if you qualify for the cybersecurity program. You might be eligible for financial aid or even have previous credits that could fast track you on this new career path. Click the link to get started. Now let's get back to the video. The enclosure itself is slightly thicker with less edges than the 200 as well. The vent hole is right here, tucked underneath the logo. And now if we look at the connector, it does get a bit puzzling as they went with the QDC connector on the EM6L in comparison to the recessed two pin on the EW200. It's not the end of the world here, but I just would have had a different preference. The stock cable feels fine. It has a nice build quality to it. Typical SimGot look, but this one has a straight 3.5 millimeter connector, which I much prefer over the 90 degree on the EW200. In my setup, it just allows for a cleaner connection. Beyond that, it has a black and gold look to the cable in comparison to the more so white or chrome look on the EW200. Both cables, they're pretty good and they match their enclosures really well. As for testing this today, I use the Shithell 2 as well as the new Midgard amp, along with a Hi Feynman EF600 that I have in for review as well. These are not an external amplifier required IEM as you might imagine. They can get the required wattage for these from basically any device. But as many of us like to get that last drop, and these do have a notable benefit for more power, so I ended up testing them with a number of options at different power levels. In comparison to the EW200, there was a greater benefit from additional wattage. The EW200 had a better performance from really low wattage. The EM6L shines when you give it a little more juice in my experience. The sound signature on these is Harmon-esque with a twist. The mids are recessed a bit and the low end is extended for more of a deeper sub-bass performance. Getting into the lows, it has really nice extension, not so much a 
punchy bass driver, but instead I would say one more focused on the actual extension itself. You might give up a little bit of kick, but you're also gonna have more of a warm feeling bass presence that a lot of people really like, a full rounded type sound. The mids are a bit different as well. The lower mid frequencies carry a little more weight, Male and female vocals will actually vary depending on where they land in frequency in this range. So some tracks you might find female vocals a little more stepped forward, in other tracks it might be males in varying degrees. Not quite as smooth or consistently present like I prefer. I felt like all in all, this was a really good sound. The slight forward presence in the lower frequencies provided a layering effect that benefited the recording by adding a bit of separation and scale. My only knock on this would be that the bass felt as if it bled into the mids a bit with that extended reach. It's great for a lot of recordings, but it felt as if it followed along for just a bit too long. It's not really lean and clean in this area, which is fine for myself. I prefer a bit of warmth here. The full sound is appreciated by myself, more so than clinical. The highs are a bit on the brighter side of things, but executed in a really smooth manner. Lots of detail and extended range, but really nothing I need to caution anyone on. I didn't find it to be over fatiguing, but treble sensitive or warm bias listeners may need to play around with EQ or tip experimentation to get their desired level. After listening to these, I can see why they come very recommended for gaming as well. The extended low and smooth highs would really do well in that area too. Comparing the sounds of the EM6L and the EW200, it's not a huge swing here, but there's definitely differences to note. Both have great vocal clarity and things like that, but the obvious difference is in the sub bass. It's more extended on the EM6L, and its extension into the mid-range gives you a bit more of a warm sound. I believe you'll find it to be less fatiguing. If you love every detail, the EW200 tuning might actually be the one for you, as it does appear to pull from the music a bit more, which can be good or bad. Poor recordings are more easily tolerated on what I would call the superior tuning of the EM6L though. This one really comes to what fits you. It's a slight step outside of the norm for SimGot's typical tuning, but at the same time, I can see why a lot of people would gravitate to this. Priced at $110, they're competitive. Not quite the value of the EW200, which just plain shines, well, quite literally with that chrome finish, but still brings a lot of value over their price point. The M6L doesn't really favor a particular genre. The warm bottom and smooth top really performs well with pretty much everything. And important for a lot of people, these are poor recordings safe. So breaking these down, warmer sounding bass and lower register mids. Treble is definitely there, but smooth in a way that doesn't shock and awe you with sibilance. Great build quality, great stock cable as well. Cons for myself, Bass reaches just a touch too far into the mids, and the QDC two-pin connectors, while not problematic, I have other preferences. I can recommend these for the listener who prefers a bit more of a warm sound signature. It's an affordable price compared to many of its competitors, and I feel like you're getting everything you could for your money here. If all your IEMs are treble-hungry detail monsters, this might be a good option to get when you really just need that nice casual listening sound. I really want to thank you for watching today. Please like and subscribe if you could for more content. Without you guys, it wouldn't even be possible. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.